the case for changing criteria to confirm models that simulate carbon disturbance and deforestation. This video was created by Claire Morehouse, Emma McGurin, Ethan Manley, and Andrew Tebow. Our emails can be found here. This project was supervised by Professor Pontius of Clark University. This presentation presents key findings from the study Criteria to Confirm Models that Simulate Deforestation and Carbon Disturbance, published in the peer-reviewed Open Access Journal Land in 2018 by Professor Robert Pontius of Clark University. The study used data from Bolivia as a case study to investigate the current standards to confirm models that simulate deforestation and carbon disturbance. The Verified Carbon Standard, VCS, methodologies VM0015 and VMD0007 for unplanned deforestation specify that the minimum threshold for the best fit as measured by the figure of merit, FOM, shall be defined by the net observed change in the reference region for the calibration period of the model. Net observed change shall be calculated as the total area of change being modeled in the reference region during the calibration period as a percentage of the total area of the reference region. The FOM value shall be at least equivalent to this value. This means that the FOM must be greater than or equal to the total area deforested in the calibration period divided by the total area of the reference region of the calibration period. The current VCS standards state that FOM equals hits divided by misses plus hits plus false alarms. The FOM is also known as the Jacquard index. The FOM ranges theoretically from 0% to 100%, where 0% means no intersection between true deforestation and simulated deforestation, while 100% means perfect intersection between true deforestation and simulated deforestation. A hit is defined as pixels in which the model predicted the pixel to be deforested, and that same pixel is also deforested in the reference image, or true pixel. A false alarm is when the model predicted the pixel to be deforested, but the pixel had forest persistence in the reference image. Forest persistence means that the pixel remained forest and was not deforested. A miss occurs when the model simulated forest persistence, but the pixel was actually deforested in the reference image. A correct rejection is when the pixel has both true forest persistence and simulated forest persistence. Correct rejections are not included in the FOM calculation. This presentation has three recommendations to change current verified carbon standard, VCS methodologies VM0015 and VMD0007 for unplanned deforestation. Our first recommendation is that preference should be given to techniques that assess the accuracy of the prediction at the true quantity of deforestation within the project area. Looking on the graph to the left, figure A, Pontius 2018 shows FOM versus the quantity of simulated deforestation for four different allocation methods, proximity, lowest carbon, highest carbon, and random allocation. The required FOM for a model to qualify is the purple horizontal line. Bold markers indicate the true deforestation quantity during the confirmation period, and large markers indicate the deforestation quantity extrapolated from the calibration period. The figure to the right, figure B, is a zoomed-in version of the graphic to the left. Now looking at the zoomed in version, the simulated quantity of deforestation is seen on the x-axis and the FOM is seen on the y-axis. The main point from this graphic to take away is that deforestation risk maps can have various FOMs depending on the simulated deforestation quantity. Consider the FOM for the proximity allocation model seen as the purple line at 1% simulated quantity versus 1.5% simulated quantity. Important to note is that 1% simulated quantity is the extrapolated quantity and 1.5% simulated quantity is the true deforestation quantity. For the proximity allocation model, the extrapolated quantity FOM is approximately two percentage points lower than the true deforestation simulated quantity FOM. This demonstrates how the FOM can change based on the simulated quantity percentage. The key point here is that the purpose of simulating a deforestation risk map is to specify spatial allocation, not quantity. Pontius 2018 recommends uniform standards for the simulated quantity new VCS methodologies, and if one were to focus on one single quantity, then it makes sense to select a quantity that shows the most informative assessment of allocation. This is the true deforestation quantity, seen as the bold marker for each allocation model in the red boxes in this graphic. 
Pontius 2018 reasons this choice for a multitude of reasons. First off, the extrapolated deforestation quantity can vary depending on the method of extrapolation. In addition, the calibration period may be a different duration than the confirmation period. To avoid these complications, what makes more sense is to simulate the quantity of true deforestation, which for this case study in Bolivia is 1.5%. The second recommendation concerns the required FOM. Pontius 2018 recommends new standards for the FOM that drop the language net observed change and instead require the FOM to be defined by the confirmation period, not the calibration period. Let's first look at why Pontius 2018 takes issue with net observed change. The meaning of net observed change is ambiguous in the VCS methodologies concerning the meaning of net. For example, in VM0015 methodology, it seems that net observed change likely means forest lost but net observed change includes losses and gains among all categories in the journals that VM0015 cites. Thus, net observed change could mean forest gain minus forest loss, which could be zero or negative if there is no forest lost or net forest gain over the time period. This could result in any model qualifying because the FOM is a percentage that ranges from zero to 100% or is always greater than zero. Pontius 2018 recommends changing the wording of net observed change to specifically define what the FOM must be larger than. Specifically, Pontius 2018 writes, the minimum percentage must be larger than the deforestation area in the reference region during the confirmation period expressed as a percentage of the forest area in the reference region at the start of the confirmation period. The other major change Pontius 2018 recommends is that the FOM should be larger than the deforestation change in the confirmation period instead of the calibration period. In addition, the time period of the particular reference region is better defined by specifying the reference region at the start of the confirmation period. The reasoning for measuring the FOM against the confirmation period instead of the calibration period is because Pontius 2018 establishes that the FOM for random allocation is always less than or equal to true deforestation, as seen in the equation shown here. Given this, changing the VCS criteria such that the FOM must be larger than deforestation during the confirmation period instead of the calibration period assures that the simulated allocation is more accurate than a random allocation. Therefore, the implementation of these changes would reduce confusion concerning the meaning of net observed change and would ensure that models simulate allocation that is more accurate than a random allocation. The third recommendation is that the VCS requirements should use a leaf graph to show how the deforestation quantity and allocation influences the simulated carbon disturbance. The VCS methodology for model selection focuses on deforestation, but a red project aims to reduce carbon disturbance. It is important for future VCS methodology to use methods to show how the deforestation quantity and allocation influences the simulated carbon disturbance because the purpose of RED projects is to be a carbon offset, as demonstrated in this graphic. In the case of Bolivia, carbon density is non-homogeneous in the forest, giving different effects based on which areas are deforested. Here is a map used to create deforestation risk maps. This is a deforestation risk map for low carbon density. This is a deforestation risk map for high carbon density. As mentioned, Pontus 2018 sought to create a method to show the accuracy of the simulation's carbon disturbance. To do this, he created a leaf graph shown here. The high and low carbon density allocation models help form the leaf graph to demonstrate carbon disturbance along with proximity allocation and random allocation models. For a leaf graph, the x-axis shows the percentage of simulated change as percentage of initial forest area, zero to 100% and the y-axis shows carbon disturbance as a percentage of initial forest area from zero to 100%. Random allocation in gray shows carbon disturbance from a random simulation of change that releases carbon at the same rate at every time point. Key to note is that if carbon density is homogeneous across the initial forest area, then a random allocation of deforestation will produce the same mass of carbon disturbance as any other allocation of deforestation. This is not the case for Bolivia. Secondly, a proximity allocation in blue, the lowest carbon allocation in red, and the highest carbon allocation in green are also included for the case study. The lowest carbon allocation and the highest carbon allocation form respectively 
lower and upper bounds in which the carbon disturbance must reside for any allocation. The shape of the bounds inspire the name of the leaf graph. Seen to the left of the red star, when simulated quantity is 50%, the highest and lowest carbon allocations form their maximum range, which is 38 percentage points for carbon disturbance. Seen to the left of the blue star, when simulated quantity is 25%, the random and proximity allocations form their maximum range, which is three percentage points for carbon disturbance. Here is a zoomed in version of the leaf graph at the origin. The leaf graph can reveal how different allocation models at a particular quantity are closer to the true carbon disturbance, which the FOM does not reveal. Looking at the zoomed in version of the leaf graph to the left, it is identifiable that random allocation is more accurate than the proximity allocation for simulating carbon disturbance at the 1% extrapolated quantity. You can tell this because at the extrapolated quantity of 1%, the gray random allocation line is closer to the black X than the blue proximity allocation line. The black X is the true carbon disturbance at the true deforestation amount of 1.5%. However, looking to the graph on the right where the red star is, the gray random allocation model line is below the required FOM at the extrapolated quantity of 1%, while the proximity allocation model, the blue line, is above the required FOM at 1% simulated quantity. This difference demonstrates how leaf graphs can provide a more nuanced version than purely the FOM criteria to show how different models perform better at modeling carbon disturbance for a particular quantity. In addition, the leaf graph demonstrates whether the simulated deforestation risk method has allocation influence or quantity influence in its error for simulating actual carbon disturbance. For example, when the simulated deforestation quantity matches true deforestation quantity, which is 1.5% of initial forest area, the proximity allocation model explains all of the negative 0.1 deviation between simulated and actual carbon disturbance, as seen in the graphic marked. This is referred to as allocation influence because the simulation model is simulating the true quantity, and so the error in carbon disturbance is due to allocation. However, at 1% extrapolated quantity simulated for the proximity allocation model, Quantity influence explains negative 0.5 deviation between simulated and actual carbon disturbance. For the proximity allocation model, quantity influence is five times more influential than allocation when the deforestation quantity simulated is 1%, the extrapolated deforestation quantity. Total carbon disturbance error at the 1% extrapolated simulated quantity is negative 0.6, which is made up of both allocation and quantity influence and is demonstrated in this graphic, as well as in the calculations here. This particular leaf graph shows how the proximity allocation model, when the quantity simulated is the extrapolated quantity, both allocation and quantity influence the error in carbon disturbance modeled from true carbon disturbance. Thus, according to Pontius 2018, modelers must measure the influence of quantity specification relative to the influence of allocation specification, because quantity error and allocation error might not be equally important for the purpose of the model. As demonstrated, leaf graphs can measure the influence of quantity specification relative to the influence of allocation specification. These three key recommendations would improve the BCS methodology's criteria to confirm models that simulate carbon disturbance and deforestation. This is of importance because computer simulation models quantify the effects of red projects. Please feel free to send any further questions to us or our advisors at the given emails. And these are our sources and additional information, including Professor Pontius's website. Thank you so much, and we hope these recommendations can create positive change towards a new methodology that evaluates models that simulate deforestation.